Would the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles still be called the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles if one of the turtles left to start his own pizza business? Would Alvin and the Chipmunks still be called Alvin and the Chipmunks if Simon went to go to university in a different country? Would Sailor Moon still be Sailor Moon if Sailor Pluto had to leave because astronomers said that Pluto is not a planet anymore? I'm sure there's a lot that can be debated upon the questions that were just asked. So instead, let's talk about teams that cannot be broken up. Let's break down this phrase. First off, an ion is something with a positive or negative charge. Individual elements are ions, but it is also possible for groups of atoms to be ions. As these groups of atoms are formed in nature and often found in the food that we eat, these groups of atoms are given team names. Also, there's usually a team leader in each group. These groups are called polyatomic ions, where poly means many. We'll start off with one of the smallest of the polyatomic teams. In this small superhero group, we have oxygen as a team leader and one hydrogen as the associate. Now, when one oxygen and one hydrogen combine forces together, they still need one more electron to become chemically stable. And once they've grabbed that extra electron, they will have an overall charge of negative one. This team is known as the hydroxides, and the chemical symbol for this team is OH negative one. One thing to point out is that the negative one charge is not just for hydrogen, rather it's for the entire team. Imagine as if there were brackets written around both the O and the H. Next, we have a team called the nitrates. In this team, we have one nitrogen as the leader and three oxygens as the members. Combined together, they will have an overall charge of negative one. It is very important that the team nitrates have one nitrogen followed by three oxygens. Because if one of the members left, it won't be called the nitrates anymore. So the nitrate group will always be one nitrogen followed by three oxygens and have an overall charge of negative one. You can probably guess who the leader is of the team carbonates. Carbon. A carbonate group is formed when one carbon and three oxygens bond together. Overall, they carry a charge of negative two. Next up is team chlorate. You guessed it, one chlorine as a team leader and three oxygens as the members. However, in this case, the overall charge is minus one. Team sulfates has sulfur as the leader. Can you guess how many oxygens it has as its members? Four. What about charge? Negative two. What about team phosphates? Yes, phosphorus is the leader. How many oxygens this time? Four. What about the overall charge? Negative three. This last one is going to be extra tricky. Ammonium. The leader is not obvious in this one. It's nitrogen. And it has four hydrogens as its group members. This group also breaks the rules with its ionic charge. This time around, it has an overall charge of positive one. I know that you're trying to find a pattern here, but unfortunately, without going into the details of how each polyatomic ion bonds, there isn't any shortcut. I'll include a link up above if you really want to know the nitty gritty details. Luckily, someone out there came up with this memory aid to memorize six of the polyatomic ions, and it goes a little something like this. Oh, Nick, the camel, ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. Say what? Oh, Nick, the camel, ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. Say what? But in all seriousness, there are four patterns here. The first one is probably obvious. O is for the hydroxides, Nick is for the nitrates, camel for carbonates, clam for chlorates, supper for sulfates, and phoenix for the phosphates. There are three other patterns in here as well. One of the patterns is taking account of the number of vowels, and another pattern is taking account of the number of consonants in each word. Pause this video if you want to decipher the pattern on your own. Ready for the spoiler alert? For one thing, eight is a reminder that all of these ion packs will end in A-T-E. The consonants represent the number of oxygens present in the polyatomic ion. And the vowels represent the overall negative charge. Let's decode all of them together. 
OH has one consonant and one vowel. So it's OH with a charge of negative 1, written in superscript. Nick has three consonants and one vowel. So it's NO3 with a charge of negative 1. Camel has three consonants and two vowels. So it's CO3 with a charge of negative 2. Clam has three consonants and one vowel. So it's CLO3 with a charge of negative 1. Supper has four consonants and two vowels. So it's SO4, negative 2. Phoenix has four consonants and three vowels. So it's PO4, negative 3. Unfortunately, you'll just have to memorize ammonium as NH4 with an overall charge of positive 1. There are dozens of polyatomic ions that exist in the world, but since this is an introductory course, we will only focus on a few. Of course, for some students, they might find it easier just to memorize carbonate as CO3 with a charge of negative 2, and that's fine as well. Now that we know what polyatomic ions are, let's move on to the next chapter. As polyatomic ions are, well, ions, they still need a metal or a non-metal to bind with to become chemically stable. Once they find that lucky spouse, together they will become a polyatomic compound. So let's go through a few examples, starting with aluminum and sulfate. Looking up on the periodic table, aluminum has a charge of plus 3. As for sulfate, you can either memorize the formula or use the memory aid supper with four consonants and two vowels. Now that we have the ionic charge for these two groups, we can determine the chemical formula by applying the crossover rule that we learned from the previous videos. So the 3 and the 2 crossover, and crudely we end up with Al2SO43. This statement here creates a lot of confusion. Remember, the definition of sulfate is a team composed of just one sulfur and four oxygens, not 43. To correct this, we place brackets around the sulfate to clarify to the reader that we need to mix two aluminums with three sets of sulfates. Now that the aluminum has married sulfate, they need a new couple's name. The nomenclature for this is pretty easy. When aluminum bonds with sulfate, you get aluminum sulfate, a powder often used in water purification plants to solidify the nasty guck found in the water. Next example, aluminum and phosphate. This second example might seem very similar to the first example, but I included this to show you things to watch out for. Aluminum still has a charge of positive 3. And phosphate? Well, Phoenix has four consonants and three vowels. After you apply the crossover rule, you end up with Al3PO43. The first thing is that you need brackets around the PO4 to remind the reader that there are three sets of phosphates. The second thing to watch out for is that this is clearly a 3 to 3 ratio, so it can be reduced down to a 1 to 1 ratio. Writing down ALPO4 is sufficient for the final answer. You could place brackets around the PO4 for clarity, however all chemists will understand PO4 as aluminum phosphate. Lastly, don't leave the minus sign around anywhere in your final answer, unless you want to be this guy. One last example. Lead 4 plus carbonate. Yes, a polyatomic metal can bond with a polyatomic ion. Lead has a charge of positive 4, and carbonate is CO3 with a charge of negative 2. With enough homework practice, you'll have this memorized. After a quick crossover, we get PB2CO34. We'll correct the first issue by placing brackets around the CO3, and we'll correct the second issue by noticing that this hasn't been fully reduced yet. A 2 to 4 ratio can be simplified down to a 1 to 2 ratio. So our final answer is PB, open bracket, CO3, close bracket, 2. Or its corresponding nomenclature, lead 4 carbonate. Practice is the best way to memorize a new concept. 
And you'll notice that at the top of this page, there are other common polyatomic ions that you don't have to memorize for grade 10 chemistry, but will show up in your homework. So make sure that you complete all the questions in the homework and check your answers with the answer key, as there are some sneaky, sneak questions in there. See you next episode!